I thought the Aura Ring would be the perfect health and fitness tracker for me. And after over 500 days, I have a lot of mixed feelings. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you're gonna use a fitness tracker, it needs to be easy to incorporate into your life. And the Aura Ring is practically effortless. It's subtle, it looks nice, and I often forget I'm wearing it. It's also lighter weight than you'd expect. And actually, when I first got it, I was a little surprised it didn't feel more metallic. I really like that I don't have to charge it every day so I can sleep with it on and not worry about whether it's gonna capture my sleep data. Nowadays, the charge lasts about four days, but when I first got it, it was closer to five. So obviously I like wearing the Aura Ring, but the data and the user interface are arguably the most important parts of this tracker. It captures so much great data related to sleep, activity, and readiness. I love that when you open the app, you see a score related to each of these areas and you can immediately get a sense of where your body is at. It's also easy to do a deeper dive into the data so you can see things like HRV, resting heart rate, body temperature, time spent in different sleep cycles, and so on. And you can even see trends over time. I've personally found the Aura Ring app to be very user-friendly. I like how they lay out the data and they make it easy for you to understand. And by being able to understand that data, you're able to use it to make more informed decisions. And it can serve as a baseline to compare against. So if you get sick or if you incorporate a new practice such as intermittent fasting, you can see how your body is affected. A few other things I wanna mention. I like that you get a notification on your phone if you haven't moved around in a while. And this is very similar to the notification that you get if you have an Apple Watch. And I also wanna call out the sleep tracking in particular. I've tried a handful of other sleep trackers and I've found the Aura Ring to be relatively accurate, non-invasive, comfortable, and effortless to wear. But there are some problems. All right, the ring is gonna get scratched up even if it's on your non-dominant hand. It honestly doesn't bother me that much. I have the silver one, I don't think it shows up that much, but with some of the other finishes, I think the scratches would show up more. It's also really uncomfortable to wear if you're lifting weights. In fact, I think they recommend you don't wear it if you're doing that activity. And that's gonna limit the activity tracking capabilities. Thankfully, the app is compatible with Apple Health, so if you have an Apple Watch, your workouts will at least transfer. But if you only have an Aura Ring, because why would you need more than one fit fitness tracker, you're not going to be able to capture data like your heart rate during workouts when you're not wearing the device. Duh. <laughs> now for the elephant in the room. If you have the Gen 3, aka the latest and greatest Aura Ring, you cannot access the data without a membership. They've put all of the data that makes this tracker so valuable behind a paywall. I know they're not the only company that has done this sort of thing. 8sleep is a company that comes to mind. You're already paying a premium for the physical product, but then you have to pay to use it in the way that it's actually meant to be used. I really don't like this model. I didn't have an Aura Ring before they switched to this model, so I wasn't grandfathered into the lifetime free access. I actually took a gamble and I bought the Gen 2 Ring off of Facebook Marketplace, and this thing does not require a membership. Previous owner, super nice lady, she said she had hardly worn it, it was basically brand new. I lucked out especially since I guessed the size. And by the way, nowadays you can go into most Best Buy locations and they have a little Aura Ring station and they have the, the sizing so you can figure out your size before you buy the product. Now I would have preferred to have the ring on my index finger instead of my ring finger, but that's what you get for guessing. I'll admit, sometimes I do think about upgrading to the Gen 3 ring, mainly because I wanna see if the data is more accurate, but I remind myself that I've actually been really happy with my Gen 2 ring, and I also really don't like subscription fees. I know it's not that much per month, but it just, the principle of it, I just don't like it. If I do ever upgrade, I would like to wait for the Gen 4, assuming that one comes out in the next year or two, because I'd love to see what the latest and greatest ring is all about, and hopefully that would warrant the cost. Now, I do want to mention that I've tried the Ultra Human ring that came out earlier this year. I actually ordered it while it was still a Kickstarter, and while it has its problems, I think it has potential. For starters, I've actually found the Ultra Human Ring to be a little bit more comfortable than the Aura Ring. Don't get me wrong, the Aura Ring, like I said, is comfortable. I don't notice it on, but if I had to compare the two, Ultra Human Ring, more comfortable. You get the point. Mainly, it's a little less bulky and you don't have those sensors poking out of it. 
but I have found the light from the sensors are visible at night when I'm in bed. And light exposure is not what I want when I'm trying to fall asleep. Data wise, I think the Aura Ring may be a little more accurate, although it's kind of hard to tell with all of these trackers, especially if you're comparing one against another. This is why you should stick with one tracker so you have a consistent baseline. But anyway, I do think that Ultra Human is working on improving their algorithms. Actually, I get the sense that the Ultra Human team is super dedicated to making improvements. Also, I love that there is no monthly subscription fee. However, the Ultra Human Ring is a little bit more expensive than the cheapest Aura Ring. But if you wear your Aura Ring for multiple years, it's going to end up costing you more than the Ultra Human Ring. I found the charge lasts about four days, which is honestly a little bit disappointing as I thought it would be longer. And I found the Ultra Human app to be less user-friendly than the Aura Ring app. Now this may be because I'm used to the Aura Ring app, but it just, the layout and the dashboards feel a little busy to me. But they do share helpful tips and I feel like there's more of an effort to educate you on how to use your data to make better decisions. I think the Ultra Human Ring is a promising alternative to the Aura Ring, but what I would really love to see is for the company to find a way to transfer all of the Aura Ring data over to the Ultra Human app. And that's one of the main reasons I keep wearing my Aura Ring, is so I have access to that historical data. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that the Ultra Human Ring sizes are a little bit bigger than the Aura Ring sizes. Both of my rings are a size 6, which is the smallest size both companies offer. And the Ultra Human one fits my left index finger, whereas the Aura Ring does not. At the end of the day, I think the Aura Ring is a better recovery tool than a fitness tool, and I really like my Gen 2 ring, but I hate the idea of having to pay to access my data if I were to upgrade to the Gen 3. And like I previously mentioned, the Ultra Human Ring is a promising alternative. I think there's still more work that needs to be done on it, but I'm really happy to see more competitors in the space. So that means that these tools are only going to get better over time. With all that said, I hope you found this video helpful and let me know your thoughts about the Aura Ring, the Ultra Human Ring, all of these different health and fitness trackers. Let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about it. In the meantime, I picked out a few other videos that I thought you might enjoy, so I I will see you in the next one.